<clears throat> okay, well, if I've done this right, we should be live now. So it looks like we're good. It says it's receiving the content. So I'm going to post this on end to the old static dev chat. <clears throat> Exciting stuff. Which is where all my wonderful people are. Um, if you're watching us from outside of the static dev chat, then that's cool as well. Uh, welcome, and you're welcome to join via this URL right here, static dev slack. Talk about lots of cool things. I guess I'll put this on Twitter as well. Um, oh yeah, look at that. I can see myself in the background. All right, so I'm going to be watching the chat as well. So if anyone has anything to say or question or suggestion or whatever, then just pop it on in there and I'll uh, make sure to answer. So that's what this is all about. Express SQL is Next.js. That's what we're working on today. Um, <clears throat> and yep, let's make it happen. Got zero people watching right now, so that's exciting. <laughs> Just gotta love it when you are talking to yourself over the internet. It's nothing like it. All right. Uh, there's OBS. Cool. And my bunny's out, hopping around, having a good time. She likes to come out late at night. Now you can see my desktop with all these troll pictures of people. Um, all right, so let's get into it. I'm going to go to this Tiny Events Club app, which is what I'm working on. <clears throat> and uh, can talk about the HashiCorp site maybe later. If anyone's interested, um, I wish it would show how many people are tuned in just like real quick so I could see it up here. That would be really useful. But I guess a lot of people stream with two screens, but I don't do anything with two screens. Okay, so let me just quickly go over the background for this um, and make sure everyone's good. one I want to miss out. Um, so I just started this recently. I probably spent like maybe just a couple hours getting it set up. To be honest, um, I should have started streaming it from the beginning. That would have been great, but I'll use the beginning of this video to kind of explain through what I'm doing here. So the gist of it is that uh, I'm trying to make an alternative to Facebook events. There are a lot of um, event websites out there and most of them are for like ticketed like larger events um, like you know conferences things that are hosted by companies at venues uh, which is great because there's a lot of money in that uh, because you can take a slice off of the the ticket sale prices so it makes sense why there are so many of those um, but what i'm after is something that's um, <clears throat> more for like smaller social gatherings like if you have, you know, 10 people you know and you want to say, hey, I'm having some people over to my house on Saturday, you should come by, which I actually am. If you're in Philadelphia, you're welcome to come. Um, <laughs> but if you wanted to say something like that um, without having to, like, individually text an email or, like, Facebook message or whatever each person and, like, figure out who's coming and such, it would just be essentially, like, same thing as a Facebook event page. Um, it's for a small social event. You don't buy tickets. Uh, it's not a big thing, but instead of using Facebook, it would send it out over email and or a text message um, and just put out the straightforward, nice-looking event page where you can RSVP. Um, it would remind you as the event's coming up to make sure you RSVP. Something that bothers me about Facebook events is that uh, it's pretty standard to just like not respond at all and not show up. It's not considered to be like... Uh, faux pas socially at all on Facebook. It's just the culture around their events. Um, and that drives me crazy. You know, I, I want the people that I invited to know that like 
I really want them to be there. And I want to get a response from them. And if they can't be there, then they just say, hey, sorry, I can't make it. Or put in a no, something like that. Um, and like on Facebook, that rarely happens. Um, so I just kind of want to do a little culture reset. Maybe get something a little more personal. Something that uses channels that everybody uses, like text and email instead of Facebook. I have some friends that don't use Facebook, and then I have to like reach out to them individually, etc. Um, anyway, stop with my list of complaints, but it's a, it's a small personal project. I'm not intending to make big money with it. I'm not honestly intending to open it outside of anybody who requests an invite. Um, so that's pretty much the premise. Um, and I'm going to make this as a server rendered app because um, I wanted to tinker with making a server rendered app, first of all, and second, because I think it's a pretty decent architecture for this type of thing. The back end is app material because it's, you know, creating contacts, creating event pages, editing them. Um, it's not like a static page kind of deal. It's a little application interface. Um, and the uh, public facing side, which is the event pages, um, I want them to, you know, render quickly, obviously, and they won't really have as much script on them because they, you know, aren't applications. They're kind of just static pages. Um, so those ones I wanted to render on the server because it's kind of a compromise between like having the app piece for the admin side and then having the faster loading, more static-esque page um, for the event pages. So that's basically what I'm going for. Um, is there, if I was ultra optimizing this, I could go for a, um, a more complex architecture where I split it up and actually static rendered all the event pages and stuff. Um, but I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole because it's a small personal project and uh, it's not necessary. And also I kind of just wanted to explore building out a server rendered app because I haven't made one before. So you'll be on this journey with me. Um, I have a very good understanding of uh, how they work and how React works. So I think we'll be able to get through it fine, but it will be a journey and surely I will mess up many things along the way. So um, I hope this is working. I'm just going to check really quick to make sure there's anybody here. Okay. And there's, oh wow, look at all these. Oh my God. Seven people. That's outrageous. Okay. Hello to everyone that's here. Um, please pop things in the chat. I want this to be a community project. So let's dig right in. So uh, what I've done is I, I've i set up Next. Um, you can see the components and pages folder, which are classic to a Next.js project. Uh, and also it gets imported here. Um, and so this you can actually use very smoothly alongside an express server um, and they have really nice documentation on how to do it which we'll inevitably see very soon because i've never used next before so I'm, i've been frequently referencing it um, and what i've tried to do is basically initially i set up this next thing and i'll, I'll show you where it is um, this is the next part here with this handle piece uh, and you can see this is kind of like the whole single page app deal. Um, and this handle thing is next version of server render my app, which is really actually uh, very smooth. And uh, you can see this is where it gets initialized. And this is where this whole handle thing comes from. Um, so this is pretty cool. And what it does here is it uh, will it will do a single page app and you can do your kind of like routing and such through um, this. So they have these little React component pages. Um, I have this component that is the layout over here. This is all really straightforward stuff if you ever worked with React or Preact. Um, it's the simplest you could possibly find. This is my whole app so far. <clears throat> I have this header piece. And the really cool thing about Next is this this link uh, piece that they expose. Um, and so what the link does it, it is it essentially will, um, it doesn't exactly expose a normal link to the page. It kind of like wraps it up 
and renders it through like the React router. Um, at the same time, you don't need to like mess with configuring the router at all. It's really nice. Um, it just like does all the work for you, and you can use this link component. And whatever page you go to, it'll go and look for uh, the matching component in the pages folder, and it'll render that component onto the page. Uh, so it's really, really nice. Um, after picking it up, I immediately really enjoyed the model. It's very straightforward and simple. Um, <clears throat> requires and imports. Was I using? Oh, that's because this is a Node file. Node doesn't support imports. Um, but all of these are my client side. So yeah, this is where you get into the... Um... <laughs> um... <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. It's because I'm not actually using a mouse, I'm just on the laptop. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's because Node doesn't support imports. This is both client and server. So here I'm in client side code, which does actually get rendered on the server, but through a webpack. Uh, and this is like purely handled and initialized by Node. Um, yeah, I appreciate the comments. <laughs> I could get a better streaming setup. I have a microphone. People who have watched our stream before will remember it when I purchased a microphone and I set it up and it was really great. But every time I do this, I'm just too lazy. Um, if enough people harass me about it, I'll go, I'll go upstairs and set it up, I promise. <laughs> I've done it before. I've done it for like important meetings at work occasionally, but like pretty rarely. Um, all right, anyway, so yeah, I mean, here's the setup. Basically, I have nothing set up here at all. And you just have these links that go to pages. Yeah, and that's how it goes down. And so I've set up a couple of like sub pages in here that I'll talk through, but I just want to go all the way from the base. This is my header. Uh, my layout sits here. It just renders the header and then the page. Um, and these are kind of my pages. <clears throat> and I don't really have anything here at all. I just have um, this index hello world page that sits inside of the layout. And then I have this dashboard page that I'm trying to render out. And what I've done as like pre-work, three mics, yeah, send one up. I'll send you a cutting board in return. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I'm trying to do first here is set up like, I like fired up next and I was like, okay, nice, this is working, I've got it, I've got how it works. Uh, and then I was like, okay, now I actually need to make this into a reasonable application. So. Um, I started working on this. And this is just this giant file full of garbage. So I'm gonna like refactor this eventually and I'll do it live, it'll be wonderful. But um, I just kind of wanted to get things working here. So what I was gonna do for this uh, app is just have login with um, auth through Google because what I wanna do is make it easy for you to import your Google contacts um, in order to build out um, you know, a list of people that you know. And the reason for this is twofold. One is because I'm lazy and I don't feel like I need multiple auth strategies, especially because this is a smaller personal app. Um, and two is because I'm going to ask to connect to Google anyway, because anybody who has an Android phone, all their friends' phone numbers are in Google Contacts, and anyone who uses Gmail, all your friends' emails are in Google Contacts. And so it's pretty, pretty likely that you're going to have most of your friends' contact info uh, registered through Google somehow. And if not, there are always ways to import it. Um, if this ends up being a bigger thing, I'd be happy to add more. But I'm just starting with that as an easy way to get contacts in there. So um, I just did only auth of Google for this one. Um, and I'm using Passport because it's a pretty standard way to do auth with Node. Um, and then everything else here is nothing special, just the standard kind of express stuff for sessions. And um, I also put in a session store because I kind of want the login to persist between when I restart the app. I kind of expect to start using this when it's like really beta um, and then continue shipping it, and then it won't have to get it logged in and logged out every time. If you don't have a session store, anytime you deploy and restart your app, it'll log you out. Um, so the session store will pretty much just um, store your session in the database instead of in memory, such that 
even if I restart the app, I, I, I won't have to re-log in again, which is great. Um, and then I also set up SQLize because I don't know how to write SQL, <laughs> which is a true story. Um, but also because ORMs are wonderful and you should use them. Um, and so I set that up with a pretty standard kind of deal. They have this kind of bootstrap script um, and this RC thing where you put in your paths and annoyingly it's a JavaScript file, but they decided not to put a JS at the end. Um, and you can kind of put it in with your models and seeds and migrations. And then I threw them all in here. Um, I have my password in there, so I probably won't show it, but it's standard config stuff. Maybe I don't have my password. I don't know. I don't think I actually have a password for the local. And I haven't deployed this yet. If you hear a lot of scratching around, it's my bunny. Sorry. Um, migrations are really straightforward to SQLize if you've never used it before. Um, welcome to SQLize land. Um, it is a pretty good ORM. It's not nearly as good as Active Record, um, but Active Record might be the greatest ORM ever made. Um, so it's hard to compete, but it's pretty pretty good uh, and fairly similar. It comes in migrations. This is good stuff. Um, at the beginning, I just keep editing the same migration because I'm just running it locally and I just clear out the database. So you'll see me do that. Um, <laughs> don't complain about it. As soon as I deploy an app, I'll start making sequential migrations so that I don't have to clear the database. But when I'm in local development, I don't really see a reason to do that. So um, I'll drop it pretty regularly once I see changes that are needed. Um, this models index thing is something that's generated by SQLize. It kind of just like runs a connection to the database and like returns all your models. Um, I keep it because it's easy and works with all their, their docs. Um, and this is my user model. Um, <laughs> I use Prettier, as you might have noticed, and I really don't like the way that it formatted this, but I think overall Prettier is worth it, so uh, I'm keeping it around. Essentially, this just says it's a user model. Uh, it only has one property right now, which is Google ID. Um, and this is a kind of a placeholder method for associations that's generated by SQLize. Uh, seeds I'm going to have to start putting in soon, but I haven't put in any yet. Uh, so that's pretty much all I've got so far. Um, this stuff up here is is pretty standard um, passport and like Google OAuth stuff. I created a Google app. Um, it was annoying, but it's done. And once everything gets logged in, it does a finder create for the user with the Google ID, and then it kind of just returns the user's profile information. Um, and this is where the SQL is. Um, sorry, this is where the session store is is created here. This is pretty easy to set up, although it took me a long time to find the SQLize store. At first I looked for like a Postgres session store. It was an episode. It's a good thing I didn't live stream it. It was a mess. Um, <laughs> here's the reminder to myself about how I need to live stream this because last time I was about to start working on it, I was like, I promised people I'd stream it. So, you know, in case you're wondering, language warning, <laughs> too late, but um, yeah, this is probably the next place I was going to put some code. I'm going to leave this here, you know? I think it's a nice little memento. Um, cool. Now you know my session secret, so don't hack my shit. And, uh, yeah, nothing too surprising here. If anyone's got any questions about it, what any of this stuff is, now is a good time to pop it into chat. I'm happy to explain it for sure. Um, and it's going to be silly to keep watching this if you're confused from the get-go. So, um, you know, throw it in there. Uh, but none of this is too crazy. Body parser you always need. This is the session store. Uh, this is the whole passport deal. This is my generic error handler. Again, session store. This function will just connect to the database. And... Um, create the table for the sessions if it needs to and like make sure that's all connected up to the database, um, which is good. I probably don't actually need this. I think it just is needed on the first time to make sure the table is there, but I really didn't feel like manually creating the table, so I just put it there. Um, I might end up deleting it later in production, we'll see. 
Um, and then here under the login route, I'll check that message in a second. Here under the login route, I'm just going to standard passport authenticate, and I'm asking for the email address, the general profile, which is like basic information. I think it comes from Google+. Plus. Um, and then I'm also asking for permission for the um, Google Contacts API. So I'll be able to hit that up as soon as they've logged in and sync through to your contacts. Um, and after login, I will just redirect to dashboard. And um, that's pretty much it. And then here, what I was actively working on was kind of trying to set up the server side rendering for this correctly. Um, so that's where we're going to be at. Um, okay. Run the app. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So it's been like chatting on stream for like an hour and not even running this app. Um, I don't know what this is. What is this? That's blank. Can you just set up? It's 140 characters. Can you just paste it in here? <laughs> um, attending.io. Oh, let me check that out. Okay, all right. Attending.io. I hope this is what I hope this is actually what I wanted. Then I won't have to build this app. Wow, all seven people are still here. This is shocking. Been here 20 minutes. I think I searched for attending. Oh. Right. Oh my god, I can't type. <clears throat> um, yeah, I really hope this is what I want. I don't want to build this app. I only did it because. Uh, Oh, nice. This is pretty compelling. I like these guys in the background. No sign up needed. All right. Let's see. All right. Okay. Okay, this is pretty good. All right. Get to watch me evaluate attending that I am. Um, all right, so my only question about this is one, does it handle your contacts and contact groups, or is that on you? Because one of the big things for me is that I have people that I will regularly invite to stuff, and I want that group of people to be managed. And I also want to be able to text some people and email other people because. Some people don't check their emails. <laughs> um, and some people have their phone number and not their email, and some people vice versa. Especially if they're people I just recently met, which are usually the people that I want to invite to events. Um, which I doubt that it does based on the description, but we'll check it out. And then the other one is, does it remind people? Because people often, like, I might make an event... Um, you know, like a few weeks ahead of time and someone might get and be like, you know, I'm not sure if I could make it to that, but I'll check back later and then they'll forget and they'll never check back. So I really need the app to remind them uh, so that they come back and check it and I don't have to do it manually because that's a pain in the ass. Um, let's check out this page. And slow. Maybe it's because I'm running. Maybe it's because my CPU is like dead though. Can I make this edit, sign in, comments, map, attendance. This is good inspiration for my own like design though because I tried to run design for this and it was like absolutely horrible. I mean, my design was just, it was really bad. <laughs> I won't even show it, it was so bad. I'll, I'll, I'll do another live stream if people are enjoying this, like working on the design, but I'm telling you, it was, it was super terrible. Add to calendar, that was part of my design, but I already have a button that does this, it's fine. Speakers, is this like a, this is like a WYSIWYG, like, page maker, isn't it? Uh, I don't like this at all. This is way too many people, this is ridiculous. They should be laid out differently. They should be cut off before all 42. This is silly. Um, all right. Okay, maps in here. This is good. Hey, I've been to Kigali, Rwanda. 
to get to this, I think. Um, okay, all right. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. I'll dig into this further later, but for now I'm going to go work on the code uh, because let's see if anyone left yet. Oh, two people left. <laughs> Brutal. All right. Um, I'll minimize this so I can see the screen. Okay. Um, last time we was in 2013. That was a long time ago. Well, I hope it's improved since then. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's fire up the app. Let's, uh, let's run it. So that we can see what's going on here. Um, okay, so there we go. It compiled all my stuff. It did the whole sessions connection here. And that's, that's the thing. So let's jump back in here. Man, I'm like losing my voice from talking too much today. Gotta stop talking. There was one time I did a stream where I didn't speak the entire time. I just like put it on at work and I was just doing that work. I'm playing techno music and not talking and I don't think anybody watched. It was weird. Um, so, okay. So here's here's Next.js doing its thing, and you can see how it like does the not full page load at this point, which is pretty good um, because this is running a React app, um, which we can probably not a little pain somewhere probably see in here unless they don't run dev tools. Yeah, so it, it's running a React app, and it's like setting up all this stuff for me, which is really nice. Um, because I didn't have to set it up, and I'm all about that. Um, so what I'm doing here basically is, I think my last step was that I actually need to set up um, Redux for this, which is a big step, but we can do it. Um, because when I go to the dashboard, it doesn't have any of my data. But if you check this out when I log in, so this is actually interesting. 30 minutes in the stream, I'm actually hitting our first interesting thing. So if I log in um, and I go to my account, then it will redirect me to the dashboard. And I've got all this data here because what I did was I rendered this, um, this is like all of the information that we need here. It's like my profile, my email, my name and stuff, all the stuff that we need to put up in the corner that's like, hey, Jeff, you're logged in, here's your account stuff. Um, and the reason that happened is because I have this login route, right? Um, and what it does is it goes and authenticates, it gets the callback, okay? And then it comes in here uh, when it's done and it redirects to the dashboard, right? if it was successful. Otherwise, it'll go back to login, which is reasonable. All right, and so then we get to the dashboard and we hit the server with that, right? Because we haven't clicked on any of their link elements to render it through React. It's going straight in through the server. And keep in mind that we have this kind of weird, so server render apps are really complicated. Uh, and they're not that common because they are so complicated. Um, because you have to think of everything from both the client and the server perspective and make sure that they line up really well. And sometimes you have to split one off from the other. Like for this login, I click on login and this is like not going through React at all. This is going straight in through the server method. It's going to Google, it's coming back, and then it's rendering this page straight from the server and not through React at all. After this page is rendered, I'm probably going to render most stuff through React because I'll be like, all right, you want to make your events, you want to add your friends, whatever. Um, but we have this little like flow that just goes through the server as if we weren't even dealing with this whole React deal and comes back through the server. So it does the login thing, it redirects back to the dashboard, right? And probably log the session somewhere in here. I don't know what this big mess is. It's right here, I think, um, because 
I wanted to make sure it was coming through. Now this is just all the sequel stuff. Goodness, this is outrageous. What is all this? I don't know what this is, but obviously I've made some large mistake in my application. <laughs> like, what is this? This is absurd. Um, <laughs> I'll check that out later. If anyone knows what it is, let me know. Um, oh, I should check the... No, okay, nothing here. Probably everybody's leaving at this point. Right when we got to the interesting stuff. So, it gets to this server route, and it, and it renders the page straight off of the server, and it passes in this data um, directly into the app. Now, notice that I'm not doing uh, any type of rendering from a template, right? This is this whole app.render, and my Express server, so a lot of the time when you're using Express, well, the docs will do this, right? The docs will say you initialize Express. Um, here, I'll show you. Uh, where did I even put it? I don't know where I put it. Here it is. You initialize Express as app a lot of the time in my docs. In this case, it's not actually my app, it's my server. And next advocates initializing itself as app, and that made more sense to me. So next is the app, and Express is the server. So whenever I make a call to anything through app, that's a call to next. Um, and next kind of serves as your view engine. So if you're using another layout engine like URB uh, or Jade or something, then you might call uh, res.render and set up a view engine and express and all that stuff. But here, we're going through Next.js, and so we go to app.render. And the cool thing is, one, you give it this route, and it will go into pages. It'll compile this React element to static code. Uh, you can see this, because if I go to view source in the page, all of this is here, which is great. It'll compile your component to static code. Um, and it will pass it any data that you pass in here, which is awesome. Um, and then it will render on the page. And then once the page renders, it'll fire up the same element, uh, and it will rehydrate this. So if I had put any JavaScript in here, which I will be eventually, what I would get is a full rendering of the initial state of the component on this page. And then once JavaScript loaded, it would kick in, and it would bind to all the elements that need JavaScript bound to them, like these routes, for example. Um, so here, when we go to this page, I get this full thing because we rendered it off of the server here, right? We passed the data in straight from the server. However, if I refresh the page, um, actually the same thing will happen, which is great, right? Because here again, I've, I've rendered it off the server. I refreshed, it went straight to the server and it hit it. But if I click on dashboard here, then I get nothing, right? Because in this case, what we did is we went to index, it rendered this component through React, went back to dashboard, it rendered the component through React, but it didn't actually hit the server, and so we didn't have a chance to pass the data in through this server route, because this route never hit the server. We're all client-side navigation here, right? So this is an issue. Um, and what I want is for the server to set this data, but I want to set the data from the server into a store that can be used on the client side as well as on the server side. But right now it's sitting in the session that can only come out of the, the server side because obviously you can't access your session from the client side um, unless I wanted to go ping back to the server every time. But what I want is to set up a universal store here that works on everything. Uh, does that make any sense? That was like the longest explanation. Um, okay, so here's a question. Any benefits you gain by using a server rendered app versus Spike? Um, so yeah, there are a couple of benefits. Um, and I feel like it's tempting oftentimes for people to try to decide on one single app architecture that they should use for everything. Oh, my bunnies come to visit. You want to say hi? No, no she left. She was too afraid. <laughs> right back into the cage. Um, I'm going to plug in my computer too. So I feel like it's tempting to say you want to use one app architecture for everything, but really when it comes down to it, 
every app has different requirements and a different ideal architecture. And Spike in particular is really great for building static pages. Um, and there are a ton of websites that are, are best made using static builds, uh, primarily informational and marketing pages. Those are the kind of pages that are really well served by static builds. Um, so, I mean, most of the internet is informational and marketing pages, to be honest. Then we've got the category of kind of like full-fledged interactive applications like Twitter, Facebook, Gmail, etc. Uh, and then the last category is kind of like blogs and news sites that are like based on accumulating a large amount of content. So for a marketing page, it's not going to be a constant addition of content, right? It will be like, here's the content, and like the content will change sometimes, uh, and update, and maybe some will be added, but it's not like the page's entire purpose is just to add more and more content, like a blog or a news site, right? And it's totally different for an app because it's not as interactive. You know, it's not like you're clicking around the page and a panel's coming out here, and you click on this, and it changes your main view. Um, and they're just pages full of information. So it's overkill to go with a full app framework. So for the server rendered stuff versus Spike, the time that you would want to server render, um, I think the perfect example is Twitter. Um, and I'll stay trained on this chat uh, in case there are questions about this, <laughs> if anybody's left. Hey, we're up to six, okay. Um, <clears throat> so so the, the time when a server render app shines is when you have a full interactive app that it would be impossible to compile out an individual page for every page that you're on. And also, you want to have good performance and good search engine optimization and share meta. Um, so let's talk about it. If we were to make a full-fledged application using a static site generator like Spike, the way that you would do it would be that you would make a single page app. You've seen SPA used uh, before, common acronym, single page app, right? We would have one single HTML file that's generated. We'd set up our server to redirect every single route back to that one file. And then that file would pull in some library like React or Angular or Vue or whatever you want to use. Um, and it would check out the URL, right? And it would take that URL, pipe it into the router, and render a page. Hey, Rowdy, what's up? Um, and so no matter what page you went to, so you could go to, um, <laughs> yeah, reaction videos. So you could go to dashboard, you could go to uh, foo, bar, whatever. All of these routes would just react. <laughs> react. They would redirect back to the index and then your javascript would read this and decide what view it wanted to render on the page right so this is fine and it works okay but the problem is that one you're serving up a blank html root right your root is just going to be a gigantic chunk of javascript and a blank page and you're re relying a hundred percent on javascript being your whole html being loaded all your HTML gets parsed. Your JavaScript gets loaded, your JavaScript gets parsed. It reads the URL, it goes to your server, right? Asks for the data that it needs for the current view, pulls back the data from the server, and then it renders your views, and then it puts it on the page. That is really, really slow. And it's slow no matter what, right? So if you're running a single page app, the benefit is that it can be super interactive you can have normal URLs, you're redirecting everything to the same view, so you can do all of your routing stuff with JavaScript. The drawback is that it's super, super slow on initial render. After the initial render, it's very fast. I mean, you can see how quick this is. The transitions look like this. They just go whoop and they update because all your JavaScript's running. It just pulls your request to the server, brings back the data and puts it on the page, right? But the initial render is incredibly slow. And so for a lot of companies, that's a really big problem because bounce rate goes up so, so fast. Like once it gets over a couple of seconds, people will just start getting fed up with and closing the site. It's especially important on mobile where people have a particularly low attention span. 
They're looking at their phone, it's taking too long to load, they'll quit or put it away. And that loses companies a, a ton of money. Um, so server rendering is pretty much the optimization for that slow initial load time that allows you to run an interactive app without the really slow initial load. And the theory is, um, and tell me if this is too boring and everybody already knows this, okay. And I'll actually look at the chat. Um, but the theory is that if you want to run a big interactive app where you couldn't compile out every single page to static, like Twitter, right? Twitter cannot be a static compiled uh, website. There's millions and millions and millions of tweets. It would take a billion hours to compile all of them. And every like millisecond, there's a new one that it would have to compile. So there's no way it could be static. Um, so it has to be it has to be rendered in a different way, right? Um, you could render the whole thing on the server, which is how everything was kind of done until a few years ago. The problem with that is that you don't get the interactivity, right? You render the whole page on the server, then you've got a static page, essentially. And if you need to do things with JavaScript, it needs to reconnect back to the server and figure out how to manage the views. And basically, in order to get the like nice snappy interactivity that you need for something like Twitter, or Gmail, or an app, um, the front end has to run on JavaScript. So people flipped all the way back to using all JavaScript for everything, right? And then they realized the initial render was really slow. So this whole server rendering thing is kind of like the compromise between the two. You take a big beefy server that is consistently really fast and strong and get it to just render out the initial state of your JavaScript app as a string and send that back right away once you hit the server so that you get that page load immediately. And then after that page load comes up, JavaScript loads up, right? So that was my way too long explanation of like the difference between kind of like spike and static compilation versus server rendering. Server rendering just serves a totally different case. And that case is when you have an interactive application that has way too many pages to compile. And it also has um, views that are like very dynamic and change frequently based on user input um, and also you want the initial state to load really fast um, and so yeah okay <laughs> he's got it went overboard uh, Ravi okay let's see what he has to say BBC dance mat typing songs um, I don't know I don't know about this business if, if, if one or two other people vote to do it then I'll do it, <laughs> okay? But not just one person. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, though. I've never seen it before, so you get a real genuine reaction. Um, okay, so back to the issue at hand here. Um, my problem is that I don't have persistent state on the client side. So I think my aim, I really want to get to... Uh, I don't think I can stream this any longer than like 20 minutes or so. But what I'm going to aim to do is is, is wire up uh, Redux in here. Now I don't think that this kind of app needs Redux. Redux is like really overkill for a small app. The only reason that I'm using it is because um, it's well documented how to set it up with Next.js. <laughs> um, I think probably MobX or whatever you call it um, is a better solution for this small of an app. but gonna go with it so I did a little research on this earlier I had these pages up um, and I know that there is a way to set it up uh, see actually this, this is an interesting one I didn't read this I don't know how old it is though it's pretty recent no it's not it's not recent at all definitely not recent it's old Next.js has changed a lot. I don't think this is going to be reliable. This is almost like... It's like 10 months old or so. 10 months old perhaps. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is just using Next Redux Wrapper. And I already have that up here. Well, no, I don't. And also the tests are fairly on this. Is this like legitimate? This was last updated seven to nine months ago, so I don't think it's legitimate. Uh, 
Let's let's take a look at next Redux wrapper. Next Redux Saga. What is that? Okay, this is the first result here. Maybe this will be more reliable. Real time Jeff research of JavaScript libraries. Okay, well tests are passing on this. I don't know if anyone else has seen this. Um, I think GitHub is AB testing this on me because some of my coworkers weren't seeing this, but I really like this change a lot. Uh, it just shows it real quick. For any integrations that you have that like run tests or like deploy previews, like even Netlify does does this for you. If you have it hooked up, it gives you a check of the X right next to the name of the test repository. But like that's kind of a big deal because if I see an X up there, um, that makes me really suspicious of the library. And also it's really good quick feedback on like whether things are in a good spot or not. Um, it's like this badge except better. So let's say this was Okay, still pretty old. Two months ago was the most recent change. Um, better than the other one. Tests are still passing. Oldness doesn't uh, mean anything. Let's see how this works. We have new Redux. Um, God, the boilerplate for Redux is just horrible. I mean, it's absolutely terrible. For like a small app like this, it's so brutal, but. I just don't want to fight the, the defaults too hard for the sake of reducing both. Okay, let me set up a reducer. Um, what are we in here? Are we in the server? No, this is a, what is this? This is just a single component. I guess all of this would probably be abstracted to a different file. Okay, I see how this works. Make store. With Redux, make store. It. Mm. It's a lot of extra boilerplate in the file. I feel like this should be one function. I mean, I guess I can probably abstract this into the one function. I just wonder why the library doesn't do it itself. Like, every single one is going to be using both of these calls. So, why wasn't it just one? I guess I'll just do this manually. Uh, state. What is this? What is this doing here? This is for manually passing in state. Okay, so how does this work in my server? That's the question. Like, this is what it looks like in the components. Um, hey, what's up, Adam? Good to see you. Um, is server get initial props yeah so I mean just using get initial props is like another option here Um, because I could just the thing is I don't want to have it like so I don't think that if I go here and then here we should go hit the server in order to get this state I feel like as soon as I load this page from anywhere the server should be providing the state to me you know, like I already have the state here. If I refresh the page, right, I have the state already. And if I just go like this and this, it like doesn't know that it has the state anymore, right? So really what I want to do is provide the state from the server, but then have the app hold on to it. So ideally I would be able to load up instead of passing it directly to the component here when this when I come back after login to the dashboard I should be able to look for the session right so really in the dashboard what I need to do here is I need to say if the user is not logged in we redirect to 
logged in, right? Because you can't get to the dashboard if you're not logged in. If the user is logged in, then we need to set the state, right? So I want to set the state here. And pass that in. Maybe not necessarily like right here, but it needs to get passed into our Next.js app and set as a global state in the Next.js app because as soon as they hit the dashboard, I want every route to have the user in the session available because it's going to be up here in the nav bar and stuff, right? So this is like global information. So I don't want to have to pass it to every single route. I want it to always be available. So we should be setting state here. And on this, we shouldn't really need to pass anything um, because the, the state is set. So that's kind of what I'm after with this whole Redux thing, um, is just using it for global kind of state stuff, which obviously is what Redux is used for. But that's the reason why I don't want to use get initial props. And for anyone who hasn't used Next.js before, um, get initial props is, is really cool, actually. But it's something that you can include um, here, like as a part of your. It's it's like a a method of your components, and this one's a functional component. But you can um, you can provide this as a method of your components, and what it does is whenever this component is rendered, this is an async. You can provide this as an async function or return a promise from it, and it will go and like get the data that you need from it so that that data is present when the component actually renders, which is great. Um, it's great for when you need to go say like, all right, when I hit the uh, whatever, when I hit my like profile page, it's the stupidest example in this case because I'm just talking about how I want the profile to be in the state, but you can imagine like when I hit this particular route, I wanted to go hit my API and get the data so it can render it to the route. This is like this built-in way for it to just go get the data and that comes out of Next.js. It's not actually something that's built into React. If you want to do it with React, um, you have to wire this up manually um, or you have to like render with a loading state and then load it and then pop it out. I mean, if you've worked with React, you've probably dealt with this before, but the get initial props thing is a really super nice, elegant way to deal with it. But in this case, I really don't want to do it because I shouldn't have to go back to the server to get the state every time. I already have the state, you know? <laughs> I had it in the first place, and it's global, and I need it on every page, so it would just be a waste of extra queries to the API to continuously go back and get it. Um, so I don't want to use that, and honestly, I'm confused about why that's even in here. I guess it's for... Uh, for setting the state from here, possibly. I guess it might be like if you want to put into the state like what page you're on or something. Um, so there's next read us saga. Gosh, this is really quite a rabbit hole here. So after quickly scanning this um, server. After quickly scanning this, I'm a little bit skeptical. I mean, so I can see one way that this would be possible. Uh, and it would basically be embedding in a function here that uh, it has this is server thing. So it would be embedding a function in, like wrapping all these up so I don't have to repeat myself a bunch of times. And then putting in each of my components a thing that, or at least in the dashboard component, right? Um, for now, that's my only one that needs a, a function that will uh, pull the state uh, from this data, right? I'm passing that directly in, and you can see it comes in in the props. Um, so it would have to be something that, I guess it would be in get initial props, but it would be get initial props, and then it would say, if, it's, if, it, if we're on the server, then take the props that pass in the user data. And uh, although I wonder, path name Corey, yeah, I pass it in through Corey. So that would actually work. That would work fine. It's not my favorite 
interface, but it would work. Uh, so we, we can fall back to that. So what we would do, does anyone else get what I'm saying here? <laughs> no, everyone's gone. No gone, no all gone. Five people! Um, <laughs> so what I'd be doing is saying, sorry, I was in here, right? Saying under get initial props, meaning like when you're about to render the component, if it's rendering on the server, then take this query data and set it into the global state. And so that way we wouldn't actually be making any extra queries or anything from the client side because this would always be ignored because I'd wrap the whole thing in the uh, if it is server statement. But every time that a page is rendered on the server, it will set up um, all of the profile and session data into this global state on the client side. So that can work. Um, let's keep looking through the other stuff we have here. Like what is we don't suck, oh goodness. I just X out. I don't know about that. Um, are these even compatible? Don't think they are. Um, <laughs> Okay, so this uses the Redux store created by this thing. Maybe this is actually a smoother way to do it. Uh, wow, well, okay. Is this like a full example app, or is this a plugin? Root reducer. Okay, that's fine. Root Saga. What does this even mean? Why is it called Saga? Why don't they like explain that? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Delay, okay. Wow, alright. All okay, I don't know what all these are. This looks very functional though. Especially take every. Um <laughs> watch Jeff struggle through documentation in real time. Five people enjoying the stream. So we have a couple async functions. Here we just Manufacture async. Then we call put, which we don't know what that does because it gets imported. But presumably, this is running a um, reducer to set some state. Uh, and then this is all, which probably is a promise.all implementation of some sort. Uh, I bet it's not using promises then, it's using async functions, this person really seems to like async functions. Um, and it just logs something and then... Redux is just so complicated. It just logs something and then calls this function. Alright, here we are in the... Uh, Presumably the server because we see some malware being created here. Right. And here we create this store. Uh, this is the worst documentation ever. Sorry to the author of this being honest, but it's baffling. Um, Oh, and he uses both of them in here, okay, in the page. And here we... You know what? I just... I just don't know what this is. There's really no explanation of what this is or what any of the functions are doing all. Like, we have these four mystery functions right here that get imported. And this one, I'm pretty sure I know what that does, but there's no documentation at all in this library and no explanation of what any of this is doing. So I'm going to close this one out because it doesn't seem necessary. <clears throat> uh, and now let's look at their official one because we'll see if that ends up using this wrapper here, next Redux wrapper. If it does, then that's good. Oh man, tired. Oh, so tired. I need to go to bed. I haven't even written any of the unit code today. Just been researching.
Sorry, this is the worst stream. Most boring stream ever. <laughs> um, I know this has been enjoyable despite me just being tired and researching stuff and explaining. I think once once I fire up the next uh, one, it will be more reasonable because I won't have to do so much background explanation. All right, digital clock that updates every second. Render first render happens in the server and the browser takes over. So it'll flash for like a millisecond with a different bubble if I got it. Uh, with Redux, that looks like the same function. No, I'm not doing much of it. I'm not updating OS X. It's going to destroy my computer. This computer is too old to update OS X. Once you have a computer for like three years, do not update OS X. <laughs> it will just slow down your computer to death because Apple wants you to buy new computers. I love Apple, but I'm not fucking that. So this has Wiz Redux, which makes me think that it's similar to this kind of deal because this has the same function. It also uses that as a dependency. So, yep, we're good. This is what we're going to go with. And let's see how this works. So here we have a whole bunch of Redux boilerplate. Thunk middleware, oh my god. Thanks. Okay. Wow. It's a lot of composing. Okay, so we're pulling in Redux. We're pulling in this DevTools assignment, which honestly probably is a good idea. Um, and then we set up these actions. This is all standard Redux stuff, okay. Then we run create store, the reducer, initial state. Um, yep. And then we compose with dev tools and apply some thunk middleware. Who knows what that is, okay. Um, let's look at our page then. Okay, so here, oh boy, bind action creates. Man, this is just so much stuff to set this up. Oh, so much stuff to set it up. It's ridiculous. Okay, these are all of my uh, oh, server render, interesting is server we return is server out of the get initial props that is crazy so okay this is interesting so we dispatch server render clock no matter what we do this Bunch of craziness, I tell you. And then we do with Redux. This is how we get the state going on. Uh, and where is the actual state? Is it actually used anywhere? So what? It doesn't even look like this is used. Link to other. It's props start clock. So, okay. This is odd. Oh, it's because we have this page abstraction. I got it. Okay. Here's the actual clock. Okay, so we have this page abstraction which gets connected with Redux. And that's where we put the state. Interesting. Yeah, this is very, very convoluted. Doesn't seem like this should be necessary. 
Um, all right. Okay. All right. Six a.m. Been up all night. This is good bet. Start. Get some rest if you want to do good work. All right. Let's. Uh. You know what? Let's just go. Let's just go straight in for it. I'm just gonna start with this. This example looks like a real mess, so I'm not gonna mess with this too much. Uh, I'm just gonna go straight in with this Redux wrapper. So here we go. Next Redux wrapper, and we'll see how this plays out. Um, God damn this! Just get out! Get out! Uh, and at some point, I do want to move the login logic to a different file because there's a lot of it. Uh, but I'm not going to do that yet. I'll do that in the next stream. Okay, cool. yeah, I'm just my CPU um, All right, so yeah, let's. Uh, I haven't used Redux in a while. Let's just copy down this. Let's build this. Let me pull it. Okay, good. It worked. There we go. And in case anyone wants to say anything, all right, I'm going to call it off after like a very brief period of time. I don't even know if I'm going to get Redux implemented. Welcome to my stream where we don't accomplish anything. We just talk about shenanigans all the time. This all goes into. Oh, they also do this whole page thing. I feel like I should be able to do that within uh, layout. Right. It's kind of what I'm using as the page. Let's try it. Let's try it in layout. I should be able to pass it. If I've created the store, I should be able to compose it in with the other components. So let's do it like this. I'm just going to drop this explicitly in here right now. Get rid of the horrendous. Yeah. Um, that's fine. We can start it up foo. No, I'm gonna. Yeah, we'll start it out with foo and then we'll update to the profile later. Um, okay, and then we need to pull down this guy. So, import Redux from. Next, Redux wrapper. Wrapper, okay. And uh, I need this make store thing. Okay, where does make store go? This is such a weird pattern. Okay. I don't really feel like this is necessary as a function. It's only used once, and it's one line. Like instead of make store, I can just use create store, right? So I'm not gonna do this, not at all. Uh, what I will do though is this with Redux. All right, so that gets passed in. No, it doesn't. It gets passed in. As the second program. First one gets uh, create store here and gets a function setting the state. Okay. Kind of looks shitty, but okay. I don't know, my bunny is going crazy. Crazy right now. Make store. Oh, I see why this is here. All right. All right. Fine. I'll pull this out. This is already a big mess down here, so I don't know. I feel bad about it. It's just so much boilerplate. It's just so bad. So yeah, I couldn't run that because this is actually passing an uncalled function. 
that it will then call with the initial state. And this is just unnecessary. Here. Although I see why they put it in the example. Here. Option is server. I'm going to keep it because I like I, I like how they use JS docs here too. Initial state options. Okay. All right. So there's that. Let's see if I can get it reformatted. Ooh, not one mind. Okay. No magic involved. Auto free maintenance that passes it down to the provider, which is not. All right, cool. We have only top level pages, but we should use the regular connect function. Okay, and then in here we're using get initial props. And it will be able to read from the store state. So where is the initial state? Do I even have one? Anywhere? Yeah, it's here. It's just empty. Let's set it to bar so we can see it. Um, okay. Page components. So it's not really actual page components, is it? It's kind of annoying. Alright, alright, alright. This is not actually gonna work. Alright, so let's move this out. Let's move this on out. And I have to put this in. Oh shit. It's not to put it at the root. And we're gonna go like this. Um, and technically I should have some like actions, I think. Yeah, this is where the actions are supposed to go. But let's just not worry about that right now. This will do... Export the reducer from here. And this we can move out to our dashboard page and all this shit we can also move out. This will be split defaults and if I say anyone left. Nope, no, no, I don't think so. Oh wow, five people still watching. You guys are really dedicated, huh? I'm very impressed. Um what did I just Okay. This is fine. This I want to pull as well into here because it's silly to include that in every file. Um, I'm just going to see if that's there. This is fine. This is not fine. Uh, this is fine. Okay, so now I just need to import uh, reducer. Oh, look at that. I don't actually even really need to export this, do I? It just goes right in. Um, and I'm not sure what else I'm going to export here, so I'm not going to do this as a default. I'm going to just import it itself. I don't know why I wrote that. I'm obviously getting tired. All right. Uh, well, let's see what happens. I'm kind of expecting this to not work because nothing ever works in the first time um, but we'll see what happens um, uh, 
And I do kind of want to get the query because I know that's what I want. I know that's what I want to set as the store. So I'm going to go back in here and at least log it out. Uh, that's on the options. So options dot query. I just want to see what that ends up being. Because I know that I'm rendering a big ass query object here to props. So if that comes out here, that'll be real nice and easy because I can just pass that in uh, into there. Should be cool. Um, yeah, that'll be nice. In theory, I can move this from here to there, but let's see. Let's, let's just leave it for now. All right, uh, let's fire it up. See what happens. I don't actually have any real code going off other than the log right there. So my real hope is that it just doesn't break when I load the dashboard. And it did, which is not that shocking. React Redux needs to be a dependency. Interesting, so it's a pure dependency. All right, that's fine. That's not the worst of errors. React Redux. There's one YouTube ad that's like really, really bad. It's like a free roll ad. But there's some guy who's like obviously a paid actor that they had sit there and like read off a script for like 10,000 different technologies. It's for Udacity or something, or like one of those online courses class. And this is this guy sitting at a computer and he's like, I use Udacity to learn React and Redux. And like, goes this whole script, even though he clearly doesn't know what any of it is. It's so fucking ridiculous. Now I always think of it. <laughs> I guess it's effective advertising. He just can't pronounce Redux. He says Redux. Like, come on. English. The only job was just to read scripts and not mess up English for it. And you have one job. Okay, no more things in the chat. You guys are so quiet. Nobody even wanted me to do this thing that this random guy said I should do. Goodness. Outrageous. Are you kidding me? I just need regular Redux too? It's truly ridiculous. Dux is the most convoluted thing ever. I mean, I understand its use, but for this kind of app, it's just silly. I might end up removing it later, we'll see. Let's try again, see if I get my dependencies in order. I do like this error screen, this is pretty nice. I would like to add this to Spike, uh, to be honest. I, went, I, I have a branch open that does, but I haven't quite gotten to finish it. Okay, look, we have no error so far. Spoke way too soon. All right, create store is not defined. Um, in store.js. Uh, e, uh, yeah, that's true. It, it isn't. Where does that actually come from? It comes from Redux, okay. Cool. So. Ugh. Alright. Okay, alright. Cool. Are we good? Do I have to reload? No, I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Okay. Great. Let's see what we got. Oh, no, it still says not to come. And this session logging is not good. Okay, look at that shit. It didn't break. It didn't even break. What is with this? It's 
with this session thing. Really, uh, I mean, as much as I want to just disable these explicit logs, I should also probably figure out why this is constantly going up. It's ridiculous. Um, okay, so, all right, it didn't break, which means that I, in theory, I have Redux with it, which is nice. Uh, and did it log options without query? I don't know. It's hard to tell with all these damn. I think it did. I think it's this. I think this is it. Under data, right? Because uh, yeah, that's it for sure. Because I messed with under data. Okay, so that's good. So I actually have all that stuff. Um. Next door. I don't know if this is the right place to do it though. I don't think it is because this I think is just a pass through kind of deal. So let me try to do it in here. First thing I'm going to do is I feel like I have to import another thing. I don't know why I feel like that. React. It seems like I don't actually need to import React to that. Because I wasn't doing it before and this was rendering just fine. So I'm gonna try not doing it. And let's let's transition this into a uh, class. Um, And this will become a render method. God damn, I really have to go to bed. Right. Just want to see if I can get evidence that I have that so I can, because that would be cool. Um, how do I get the state in here? Does it only come in through get initial props? That what happens. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what type of it. Comes in through get initial props. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Fine that. Alright. Um so this is supposed to receive the store. I just want to make sure it receives the store. If it does, then we're good. We're totally good. Because what we can do is the original plan of saying if we're on the server, then put the query into the state. Right? We should be able to dispatch a uh, set profile or whatever, you know, like initially set profile, update profile action, and then put the payload as our, um, as our user. This is the user uh, from the database, like this is the full database record, and then this is the whole user profile that came from Google. So I, I really would like to add both of those. So I can do set user and set profile, and just crank those both into the store, as long as I have the store here. Okay. So let's find out. Moment of truth. Ooh, props is not defined. Okay, it's not surprising. What is all this business? Oh, is this? Oh, you know what? That's interesting. So it didn't. Uh, it didn't do anything. Let's try going back. Didn't log anything. Did I type this in correctly? I think it's be static, I guess. Okay. Uh, uh. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so it did work. Which is good. 
Now, in theory, if I reload the page, it should still show up. Hmm, but it did not. That is interesting. It still should be getting the initial props. I guess it doesn't though because it, it rendered initially on the server, right? So in theory, I got my log somewhere in here. And I did, here it is. I see, that's actually pretty nice. So it only runs on the server when it renders from the server. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty solid. Okay, all right. Well, I think that's pretty great, and it's late, and I think I'm going to stop the stream, but I hope that you learned something about my musings about server-side ops. Um, <laughs> watching me wonder the act. Yeah, welcome to the life of every programmer. Anyone you think is good at programming, they're doing the same shit, I promise. Um... But I, I, th I think there was some actually pretty decent progress made here. The get initial props thing is really nice. I like that. I always have liked that. Um, I do like that it is, uh, it is run on the server when it renders on the server and run on the client when it renders on the client. Um, I think the next step here is to obviously get the profile info loaded up into the store. Um, I think that as more routes are added, so like, let's see. I'm trying to think of any time, like, so let's say if I added a route that was different from dashboard, that was like events slash create, right? If you wanted to create a new event, uh, I would still want the state to be there, even if even if it was um, loaded from the server, right? So if I went to uh, slash event slash create and I hit enter, the initial view would be rendered on the server, and I would want the profile to go, the profile data and stuff to be set up in the state. However, I wouldn't necessarily want to have to repeat the same action in every single component. Um, so this I would want to abstract out and one potential area that it could be done is in here because I know that I'm gonna be getting that from every server route. Uh, another spot where it could potentially be done would be somewhere in here in the server. If I could set that up, uh, this is the goal because then I wouldn't have to pass it the session through to every single one of these routes. Um, because I don't plan, I don't want to have to have a custom route for every single one. Um, I would rather just be dealing with this kind of thing. So it's possible I could pass some query data through this handler here so that it just went to every, the session went in through to every single route, which would be fine with me. Uh, and then it was set in here so that I didn't have to do it in every component. Um, and it is also possible that that won't work out, but I definitely am gonna figure out something that I don't have to repeat the same logic to set in every component because that's a real pain in the butt. I mean, it's possible that there's some way I could actually import the store into the server um, and manually set the store up without having to pass it through the request to. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But either way, we'll get there, and uh, I will stream this again next time I did it. So there's a record, and yeah, that's all. And if anyone has any quick questions before I go, let me know. Um, glad you guys were able to troll me a little bit. <laughs> and that's about it. I'm just going to clean this stuff up. And myself out. I hope you enjoyed this tinkering with React and such, and we'll be back to do more of it and probably some database stuff next time.
Ooh, look at all those things. Oh, it's like delayed. It's weird. Oh uh, yeah, thanks for letting me know, Fox. I know that. Okay. Alright, well, that's all. See you guys later.